So I picked up one of these the other day. Really nice and cheap. Um, it came with um, two processors, been upgraded. All the memory was in the wrong place. Um, and it also had a faulty PSU. Now, take the PSU out, but as you can hear, there's some rattle in there. So um, I thought, I wonder if someone's put something in there or something's happened and something's in there. And what's actually happened is one of the coils on there have uh, cracked and the heat being thrown out the back of it was, um, uh, let's say, considerable. Um, so I put my hand at the back thinking, oh, that's a bit warm. Um, took it out and, uh, yeah, it's not gone back in. So it runs on one uh, power supply. These are... Um, think like 900 or a thousand watts something like that I will see it in a minute I'm sure I will and they're only 700 watts so yeah there was 700 watt power supply unit um, it rattles and it produces about 700 watts at the back of it so um, in here there was a mix of RAM and they hadn't bothered to look up how to actually fit them so you had them um, uh, sequentially in size order so there's four gigs and some two gigs and some one gigs in there I think um, and they put them all in the wrong place they weren't balanced properly uh, the process I think are, are 5240s and interestingly enough on this um, server board is the SAS card which isn't actually PCI Express it's got these little clips in here and I'm going to show you how it actually fits in there's no battery backup that's missing from it. Um, it just clips in. Let me see if we can get this up. There we go. It's another bloody clip I missed. Uh. So there's the SAS card connection. So as you can see, you couldn't really fit anything else uh, on here uh, into that. Um, to replace it, we'd have to get a original OEM part. So as you can see, it's relatively awkward. There we go. But um, yeah, so apparently the person I bought this from said it was here when I moved in. I don't know if it worked, so it was cheap. Um, I didn't plug it in straight away. What I did was um, take the cover off and have a look. Because if you look, let me check so right there, there's like uh, water damage um, on it where it's been damp. So I thought I'd better check it out first just to make sure whether it's um, you know feasible or not. So we wanted to see what was in there. Obviously, it has. Um, jammed in, I guess probably the best word for it, was the SATA drives. They don't actually didn't actually open properly. Um, that's a drive I've put in so you won't get you there. But I did get quite a nice surprise with uh, well not a nice surprise I suppose. They are laptop hard drives. Uh, this one's a seven hundred um, a one gig and the other one I believe is a 750 gig so you've got a terabyte and a, a a 750 gig drive so these are both laptop hard drives in there it came from a domestic place so I assume that what someone did was probably bought this um, put the RAM in incorrectly had not much luck with it and decided to um, leave it round somewhere and forget about it and then someone obviously moved in and found this server. Now I thought that this G5 would be rather similar to my uh, G6 but it's not. Uh, the processors are the same on the um, 360, they're both exactly the same. Uh, motherboard layout similar but not the same. Uh, the riser is different, there's no SD card um, port where they would be, but there's two USBs. Um, but yeah, so um, I fired it up and it works. So the 
There's no secondary port on here. Uh, on the back plane, there's two ports on there, so you can actually have uh, the full drives in there, so you get your top ones. Although, technically, these you couldn't get in there anyway because it's got um, no brackets for it. So, as you can see, it was quite a bit of a bargain, really, in a fashion. So as you can see on the Gen 6, the controller memory block is here. Um, the fan assemblies are completely different. The configuration for the processors have split memory between them, whereas the um, Gen 5 has just a single bank set. So as you can see, the power supply difference, uh, if I can go up really high, you can see that there's quite a size difference. Uh, between them. The um, riser card there is really similar in design um, where the um, where they clip in there and similar in design but the underside here it clips further back on the Gen 6 than it is with the Gen 5. The thermo block is uh, much bigger than it is with the um, thing, but the sound speaker is roughly the same. So as you can see, there's the SD slot where there is none on here. Um, you just get your USB risers, whereas you get the SD slot and the USB risers on the Gen 6, plus your power supply, which is a six pin, which could go to a graphics card, although this actually powers the uh, riser, if you can see that in this light, which is there. Um, but you can see in here, the top gallery is empty. However, on the G5, you've got this here. Although, there doesn't look to be... Um, it hooks in, where there appears to be a screw. A screw there, where there's no screw there. So, if you look on the Gen 6, you've got a screw point here which equivalent is a hook and then a screw here and a screw here which is for the back plate but there's nothing really there you got one for the thing and nothing at all so fitting a back plane to it isn't going to be as simple as just soften them over they actually fit on this rail that runs all the way across the bottom and as you can see on here it locks in but screws down from the top so there wouldn't be a lot of, um, you know, benefit of swapping over. You couldn't really do it. So yeah, so it's not really a, a swap overball generation uh, of different hardware that can be swapped through. And the only difference being is that perhaps the SATA cable, the SAS cable is probably the right length to swap over uh, if that was the case. Although the controller is nearer the back on the uh, Gen 6, it's back here, it goes underneath, and all the way back to here, there we go, there it is, I knew it was somewhere, there you go, so it goes to there, so yeah, so technically you could do it, although it's probably not recommended that you would, um, because you can't actually get, well you'd have to get the specific Gen 6 back plane if you were going down that road, and as you can see the difference in the uh, coolers, this one is looks like a more newer design, um, what I might do is look up that part number and we'll see because this one looks about right for this and as you can see it's a different size if I put my finger over it then you'll probably get some idea that it is slightly larger than the Gen 5 coolers um, the Gen 6 is smaller the Gen 5 is larger so there's not really much to say about this it's a lovely little processor it has um, that processor has more cores than this one um, you know, it's running 460 watt PSUs rather than 700 watt PSUs. Uh, so it runs, it has more processing power, runs on lower power. Um, so, you know, which one are you going to choose really? You know, I've got, I can put more RAM in this than I can in this. 
so obviously the Gen 6 is going to win. These are really quiet as well. Um, if you get sat, uh, the set up properly, they do run really quiet though. Um, do get quite warm near the back though. Uh, not particularly um, like majorly bad, but they run up near the uh, top of their thermal design uh, rather than anything else. So, uh, yeah, if you wanted to know what was the difference between a Gen 5 and a Gen 6, well, there you go. You can actually physically see the difference. You have less RAM, um, more power on the Gen 5 than you do on the Gen 6. You can shove it in an SD card and USB sticks into both. Or just the SD card being obviously the benefit here. Um, it's onboard um, SAS controller, whereas the Gen 5 has this plug-in board. Um, and they're relatively, they have a fair few things that are very similar anyway. So, um, you know, there's not a huge difference in them. But obviously you're not going to get as much performance from the Gen 5 as you would the Gen 6. So, um, yeah, just like that just really finishes off this video. And of course we get B-roll for it. So the quick question is, would I recommend a Gen 5? And the answer to that is probably no. Um, their backplane and drive speeds are going to be slower. Um, the process is slower. Um, the um, motherboard is generally slower and more power hungry. So you're not really going to get any major benefits from using a Gen 5, even in a lab environment. Uh, the price for the G5 is relatively cheap. Um, you know, you can pick them up for uh, pittance. Uh, a Gen 6 is a better option and Gen 7 a better option again. And when we're looking at this, we're looking at the running costs of a a server um, and its performance uh, to its running costs. Now if I had the Gen 5 running um, at full speed then I'm going to uh, use quite a lot of power with that and I'm not really going to get uh, the maximum performance from it. I know it's only a 80 watt processor, it's 160 watts with both of them in there uh, plus all the other hardware which will run higher um, because it's that much slower so the newer tech would offer some power savings and performance boost and this power saving and performance boost um, when you're talking about servers that were on um, you know if you wanted to use this as a home server it probably would work fairly well it's not going to be brilliant um, you know, and for the price difference between the newer generations, um, I wouldn't recommend going down the route of a G5. Although they probably come in handy for something, um, but yeah, I would head away from them because of the prices of Gen 6, Gen 7s and all the way up to even Gen 8s now. Um, I don't even know what generation we're on currently, but yeah, there, there's quite a lot of generations there um, which you can pick from and, and that can match your budget. So you can, the Gen 6 and Gen 7 are quite similar actually, um, so you couldn't go, the Gen 5 is really old architecture really. Um, over the uh, Gen uh, 6 and yes you can um, upgrade the processors somewhat however HP have made it quite difficult to do so um, with BIOSes and everything else I mean I have problems with my 8 core 16 thread um, Gen 6 um, because of some software can't work with the BIOS that's on it uh, it's simply incompatible they do work but they don't work properly um, so you have to uh, uh, work that out for yourselves. Um, I mean, that Gen 5, pro, that Gen 5, I literally pulled it apart, uh, stripped it down, upgraded one of my other IBM servers with the parts of it, and took the old rubbish from that one that I didn't want anymore, and banged it into the um, to the Gen 5. So yeah, so the Gen 5's up for sale for a couple of quid, um, you know, and that will be sold off, and someone might want it for the power supply. Or something else but the newer gens have smaller power supplies they may have the same wattage I think they do a 750 watt and a 960 watt um, so people will probably want those over whatever but I prefer the smaller uh, lower powered units because when I'm using the servers and this is the big difference in the new servers over old servers is that with multiple calls you have less requirement for servers because you can process that data um, more on one unit 
um, over the um, having to have a stack and rack filled with uh, servers you can go down and use something like a 16 core uh, newer server as opposed to um, you know three or four eight cores uh, to make up the same processing power so I, I mean the, the maths obviously work out there for you obviously the data array uh, really does make a difference there um, because this is the uh, connection point for those servers now uh, dual channel triple channel and quad channel memory also makes a difference um, there's not much difference between um, I think one is PC2 and obviously the Gen 6 PC3 so you get memory bandwidth difference there um, and so uh, yeah no is the answer would I recommend them no um, they're not a steer clear of but they are getting uh, uh, very old and long in the tooth and they are not um, high performers although maybe someone might want them for some sort of desktop application although uh, making them into some sort of desktop would be near impossible because of the configuration of the boards um, and I'm going to put in like a GPU in there or, or something like that um, okay, so uh, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you uh, can see the difference between the two and maybe that was the question you came here to find out the difference between them and whether they have any compatibility. Uh, the answer to the compatibility is no, they don't really have any compatibility at all. They're two complete generations and um, yes, the 55 or the 5000 uh, Xeon um, processing processors will actually interchange between them there are limits um, and it's down to the uh, design and the BIOS uh, by HP which is strictly limited um, to maximize sales obviously over usage although some processors, some processors will work and others won't so you can't upgrade uh, right the way through the range on the uh, G5s or the G6s anyway so I hope that helps. If you like this video and you'd like to see more um, videos, do subscribe. Um, make sure you click on the computers and technology playlist or link rather than the channel because I don't just do computers. Thank you very much and goodbye.